<laughs> oh, Yoon. <laughs> ah, Yang So. Hey everyone, it's Garrison here and welcome back to the channel or the Patreon where we're currently watching from. And today I'm really excited because finally I'll be doing my first listen slash full on album review to Stacey's third mini album titled Teen Fresh. And with this era of bubble, we have brand new B-sides, at least three new B-sides of course, and I'll still be covering the English version and the sped up English version of Bubble. Not gonna lie, I wish we just straight up got two brand new uh, B-sides instead, but I'm not gonna be too quick to judge when it comes to the English version of Bubble by any means because the song itself, Bubble, was truly what we needed in this year, specifically in the season of summer of 2023, am I right? Hello, hello, punch you like an 808. Man, oh man, poetry to my ears. That line alone is so mad catchy, and I always anticipate for that singular line in the song, right? Just how joyous, happy go lucky, light on its feet it is, and just the sugar rush that we truly needed while also coming through with a bit of that nostalgic kind of feel from second gen third gen k-pop i've got to admit with a lot of effusive energy and laser beam since that i was describing about in the song truly packing a punch in that song but i'm really interested in the b-sides of course because as some y'all may have seen my reaction to the highlight medley teen fresh i went crazy saw credits that of course of individuals who are not part of the Black Eyed Pills Sung uh, collective work with Stacey in the past before and them in the previous eras and pretty much what I said was I felt like this was a culmination of previous eras of b-sides all jam-packed into this teen fresh album but I'm gonna have to hear out this album in full so hey Without further ado, let's just dive into the album review now. All right, so this first B-side is titled Not Like You. Not gonna lie, this song left a good first impression for me upon the highlight medley. But seeing familiar names, of course, we got BEP, we got Rado, but Will B and Jungoon. As some of you may know, I mentioned Will B in the past before, has worked with Stacy. In the past before on I Want You Baby coming off of the younglove.com era and all has worked with Khan's I'm Your Girl. Really wish that a group moved on. That's a whole different conversation. Amazing song and all. Bittersweet. One of my top favorite B-sides by Dream Note. Still to this day, honestly, and one of the best B-sides coming from the year of 2020. And then we have Jun Goon. Jun Goon has worked on many of our favorite Stacy B sides. I cannot express this enough. I think reigning all the way back to their debut era, even, but has worked on the likes of Slow Down, Complex, right? Gotta Go by Chunga, specifically. I'm So Sick by a pink with BEP in the works. Many of our favorite songs out there, and if I recall correctly, has worked with twice in the past before. But aside from that, I'm really interested how the song's gonna go. Let me bring it up here right away. Keep in mind, color coded lyrics are not always correct, can be misleading, and there can always be lost in translation for these lyric videos. But hey, let's just dive into Not Like You Now. <laughs> right away with Sheehan. Ooh, I love that wood block work, like percussion work. Very rudimental with it. Ooh, I 
and just this like playful energy that we're getting with the vocal direction very bouncy movement so far with these chords and bass work with the keyboard work or piano whoa okay now we're into the pre-chorus that took some time to get in the pre-chorus Ooh, just how that U is panning on the left to the right side of our ears. U. Ooh, Lottie Dottie? <laughs> what a verse two here. This is my policy. There's a lot of ear candy and satisfying moments, I've got to admit. Oh, that drum kit work, ticking up the hi-hats. Like you. Tell them. Okay. Ooh, that bass work. I love how it switched up on us. With the drum kit work. Nothing is said. Mm. Cut, cut. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the rhythm is so addictive. Quirky, playful, and fun with it. She and in the back there, I believe. I want you to respect me. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Oh my goodness. The message, the intentions of this song, so straight to the point and all. I love it. You know, it may not be one of the best or my particular personal favorites from Stacy in general if we're thinking about their discography as a whole but I love the energy in this song just the vibes that they're giving off in this song very bouncy with the movement it's in combination of that bouncy bass work that's very elastically key and then there's that keyboard chord work that's gently played simultaneously which is really cool in my humblest opinion and what i think is going on in terms of the overall arrangement we got a brief intro but then it didn't it took quite some time for us to actually dive into the pre-chorus believe it or not so i'm gonna double check that when we get into the second go through uh, here and process the overall arrangement in the song because I can't be the only one sensing this and feeling like this that it takes time to actually hit the pre-chorus like it it this the start of the song with a, a verse one and the intro and something else that's going on is really setting the tone and easing us in to the song you feel me but i'm gonna bring it back up here to really try to understand the arrangement at the beginning here and all yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's the intro with the yeah 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 very rudimental with the beat and all talk to me talk to me okay Respect me. <laughs> what a follow up by Isa here. I love it. Whoa. Doon, doon, doon. 
And I think once it goes doon, 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 just the bass there, it transitions into verse one. So in fact, we get hit with the intro. Yeah, 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 and all that. Then we get hit with a refrain, which is pretty cool, I've got to admit, because usually you hear refrains after a verse one, after a chorus, or utilized as almost like a, a post-chorus and all. But the fact that we get this sort of fun breakdown already by Sheehan and then we go into zoom in here quite interesting choice of arrangement but it sticks and I love the kind of vocal range that we're getting in this song even though it's very playful and quirky with it <laughs> and I love how that bass and like hi hat work simultaneously goes with the d d d d d d right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The details here. <laughs> but then this pre-chorus, it just sends you. It really sets up the chorus, everyone. So essentially, what we get here is an intro. The yeah, 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 that wasn't shown on the screen. Then we get a refrain. Then we get verse one, right? As as soon as we get into zoom in, and then later on we get to follow up with CN. And then we get hit with Yoon here during the pre-chorus, which I think it switches, if I recall correctly, to Isa the second go around and all. And quite prominently, we do get Shein in the chorus of this song. Like you. <laughs> I love it. Every time that bass goes, like it's like stepping on a gas pedal. Do, 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 do. I love it, right? <laughs> Great percussion work, drum kit, bass work in combination. Now we get verse two here. La di da di, we like to party. So iconic. Dare I say, my favorite moment in the song, this verse two, kicking it off with she in here. Yes, I enjoy my life because this is my policy. This is my life policy. You feel me? I do what I want. And I love that policy in the background because that's my policy or something like that. Let's hear it. Yeah. Man, just the moments of like the members intentionally singing these sort of lines in this kind of vocal, vocal direction is quite interesting and fascinating because you notice some moments where it's very sharp with it in terms of the attack and vocal pro uh, projection. But then there's some moments where it's like there's intentional moments where it's like deep breaths are made or airy moments are intentionally done. You feel feel me, Dad? More life to the song. <gasps> you hear that by by you in there? That additional. <gasps> I love that there. I love it. It's it's very small. It's a small detail, but listen, it adds so much to the song. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Ooh, definitely some synths riser there. I'm not like you. Like you. Now we get the bridge, right? Pretty much we get this trap percussion work going on. That's na na na, you can never hold me down. Oh my goodness. 
But notice, you know, just the transitions between these sections. Very smooth with it. Very smooth. Nothing too abrupt in terms of these changes in the sections in the song. Because, in fact, you would think at the beginning after the intro, that's an extended verse 1. But at the same time, it's not an extended verse 1, you know. It's, it's, it's comprised of... A refrain and a verse one and just how it moves into this 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 bridge here you're not ready for it but it works yes jay i love her voice on this song most particularly it suits her I think like Xian, Yoon, and Sumin, I would say those couple of members really stood out to me in this particular song. And then at the end there, see what I'm saying at the details, a lot, of, a lot is considered. And you see that when it comes down to the behind the scenes and footage that you see in the past eras and all, whether it's changing keys, whether it's how they should sing certain sections and moments in the song, right? It's it's very detailed. It's very detailed. All the details are considered and all the factors are considered. But hey, let's just dive into the next B-side now. So this next B-side is one of my most anticipated B-sides based solely on the highlight medley, and that is I Wanna Do. And of course, we have both Will Be and Van Gogh on the same track, which, by the way, have worked together on I Want You Baby Back to the Young Love dot com era, everyone. And if you guys remember, that song took the R&B and drill route, most heavily the drill route. That's right. And based on the highlight medley, the one section they gave us felt very drill influenced, at least, you know, taken the trap percussion with heavy bass with it. It, it, can, it can be very debatable, but it's all going to be determined in how the movement of the song is going to go, I've got to say. So I'm going to bring it up here right away, and let's go. Ooh. Really nice toy box beginning here to the song. Stacy, oh, iconic Stacy line there. Ooh, J though. Wait a second, this is Sumin and CN, yeah. Nice triangle percussion work in the back. South Pole, North Pole, like a magnet by your side. Wow, these lyrics. Whoa, this moment here, got some early 2000s influence. Woo. Wow, just this like very sentimental, passionate vocal work. It sticks with this kind of production, I've got to admit. So sweet. Whoa, Yoon. What's going on with the song here? Whoa. Jay. This song is taking a lot of twists. Summon and Isa. And that vocal and Mormon to the CN. Back to the toy box. Like sound effect and instrumentation. <laughs> yeah, definitely very sentimental and passionate with the vocal work and the direction of it.
Oh my goodness, this instrumental break. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> they really got me crushing right now. <laughs> this song. It's crazy. Just the overall movement to it, not necessarily specifically like song structure wise, but more so like vocal arrangement wise. Like, for example, that time when we got Sumin and Isa during verse two, but then the combination of Sumin and Sien, if I recall correctly, not only once, but twice, and maybe even three times in the song. I'm gonna have to double check, but I'm pretty sure two times. And we cannot forget Jay. I feel like she truly shined in this song with her beautiful vocal work within this. Without a doubt, I gotta say, Jay really shined in this particular song. Now, it can be quite debatable, right? Is this taking the drill route? I wouldn't say the 110% with it, right? But more so, I would like to say alternative pop with some drill influences in the mix. And did I mention 2000s influence? I'm going to point it out, the 2000s influence that we're getting in this because I'm getting that 2000s, right? y2k influence if you guys are familiar with the likes of like the way i are by timbaland and like those songs that released within that kind of era heavy with the bass with it at times it does it can have this kind of percussion work it's not necessarily like this kind of like sentimental feely with it and all. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but I'm getting that kind of influence within this. Like elements and instrumentation that is more so coming from that era specifically, which is insane in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm going to bring it up here, everyone, go through it again and really point out the parts I enjoyed and process more of this, this song. I love it. Just the toy box. Very misleading, mind you. <laughs> then we get Stacy, the iconic Stacy line. I love how they slipped it in there, right? Very sharp, very on point when it comes to the vocal direction. Very snappy with it. You know, you feel me? And then we get into Zoom In and seeing why don't you ride on? Right on it. It's very mesmerizing. Just the two of them coming together here. Very punctuated, right? Then we get this really cool vocaloid moment that happens here and there. This is like one of the the first couple of times. My phone's sleeping on the side. I'm still closing my eyes. I just want to look at your face. <laughs> this feels like one of those, like, uh, I don't know, portraying a story of, like, FaceTiming, but, hey, it's time to go to bed and all. Definitely like a lovey-dovey song. There's that Vocaloid moment, but it wasn't utilized as a transition. It was utilized during, like, more, almost like a filler between the gap. It's just call me my babe. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I love that kind of filler moment that it's done, that Vocaloid moment. The song is so sweet. I love it. The lyrics really work out well.
All right. Doom, 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 doom. Some sort of riser being utilized there that really... Not sizzle, but like, you know, builds up the tension. That's what we call a riser. Neon. Bit of triangle work in the back. That percussion work. Just that, 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 that like drip drop like sampling. And just with the dipping of the bass here with Jay. Oh my goodness. Got me so mind blown. First go around, even this time around. <laughs> Bit of a laugh, right? And then, oh my goodness, this vocal moment by Suman and Isa is to die for. Oh my goodness, just how they take it up a notch here, right? Like, this is one of those very sentimental earnest, passionate, lovey-dovey songs, I've got to admit. And honestly, by Stacey, it, it, it sticks. See and has her moments. I really hope they ended up performing this song. Just how they hold a do or the word you. <laughs> Boom. This. This instrumental break has to be the most throwback 2000s Y2K influenced moment that I've heard in this song, right? Just this break and the... Whew, it, it takes me back down memory lane. So like a moment like this, this is like, wow, this is... Definitely that sort of like Y2K alternative pop genre mix. But what a brilliant outro at the end of the day for the song, everyone. I think upon first listen, I was like, okay, this song already has good longevity and replay value to it. And then upon second listen, as you hear it out more and more, you get to notice the fine details in the song, whether that be the vocaloid moments, the percussion work in the back, the likes of the triangle as one of the percussion works, right? And just the lyrics too, too, that really stick in the song in with good intentions, mind uh, you. And also, yeah, Jay with the chorus. Woo, this has to be... Honestly, just how everything played out here with the succession of Suman and Isa, Suman and C and J with the chorus, like, this has to be my favorite B-side so far, without a doubt, everyone. I think this has to be it for me, but we're going to have to find out as we progress into the next B-side, so let's just get into the next B-side now. So this next B-side is titled Be Mine, the final B-side, actually. We'll still be checking out the English version of Bubble, probably Skim through it to save some time so I could provide my concluding thoughts for this overall third mini album teen fresh but I'm seeing familiar names we got VXN with prime time both of them has worked on butterfly in the past before more specifically BXN has worked on butterfly 24 7 coming from the younglove.com era we love to see it has worked with the likes of EXID has worked on Sparkling by Chunga, even Chikata by Rocket Punch. Such an amazing song that is underrated in my humblest opinion. Also an underrated group at the same time that finally got their flowers off of 
Queendom puzzle as of recently. But I'm going to bring up Be Mine here right away. And let's see how this plays out, everyone. Very chill with it. Oh. Love the keyboard work. And the punchy drum kit work. Yeah, just the overall vibes in this. I love it. Quite playful with the keyboard work now. <laughs> what a chorus! Very sweet with it. It's so lovely with it. I'm a needy. Mm. <laughs> Give me more time. Whoa, this moment by Jay though. Verse 2, right? But I'm a bit insecure. Mm. There's a lot of earnesty in this song, I've got to admit. I feel like it's sort of like a coming out kind of moment. It's like, I like you. In a way. Let's see how it goes as we progress here. Aww. I'm really clumsy. Turn up. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yoon in that moment. Bit of whispering. Ooh, getting quite jazzy with it here. I am torn. I don't know if this is my favorite B side, though. This might be it. I don't know. It's. <laughs> Gonna be difficult, but I think with more and more streams, I'm gonna have to find out for myself. And I say that because I really love the lovely chorus within this song. Just the jazzy, playful moments that we get in this song. How we can clearly hear some of the, well, honestly, all of the instrumentation that's going on in this particular uh, song. I think Jay really shined. Uh, in this song, in her moments, Sian had her moments, of course. I'd say Sian and Yoon, most particularly in this song, really stood out to me. And it's just very easy to listen to. Right tempo, right, right tempo to it. Not too upbeat, not too, too slow with it. Just right. And also, I really love the ad lib work follow up in some of the moments going on in this particular song and on. And just that crazy switch up by Jay in the second verse. But it takes time to sort of tell this story of like having this sort of clumsy love of coming out of a moment towards another individual, it seems like. And especially once we hit that bridge, ooh, it gets very delicate and vulnerable you know what i'm saying so just for them to be able to do that not only lyrically but like at the same time vocally and depict that kind of emotion is very powerful right so just how the ebb and flow between the overall production in this song and 
the vocal work and the intentions behind the song is very sincere and pure and i really appreciate that everyone so i'm gonna bring it back up here again go through it again before we get into the versions of of course bubble right so yeah love the like delicate whispering moments too one two right truth is a lie it's a bit complicated <laughs> love the bass work or bass line in the song as well but most importantly the vocal layering this is what i'm saying right whether it's soul moments by the members or these vocal layered moments and ad lib work in this song it adds so much depth and texture to the overall song Low key, this might be it for me. This might be the song for me. The J. This is where it gets quite hazy with it and all during verse two which is quite the surprise and twist and all <laughs> yeah just that keyboard work prancing around like that i love it i love it i love it You're gonna be deep in love. And I think it's no no, right? Just that ad lib work. Even though it's not being shown here, there's a lot of ad lib work in this song that adds so much to the song. This is this vulnerable moment that you know, is very sincere with it. I'm really clumsy with my feelings. Just, oh. You don't know me, Nat. Turn up. <laughs> I love that transition to Jay. Oh yeah, you near and then she and awesome man. Oh, I love how it continues briefly here and then boom. Just like that, it ends, everyone. What a lovely song. Honestly, with more and more listens, this might end up being my favorite B-side, low-key, right? I, I could totally see it not being, like, the common, like, favorite B-side amongst majority. But this one, it just how cute and adorable the sort of clumsy love storytelling factor that they did in this song and how sincere it is. I love it. You know, I love it so, so much, especially with the, the ad lib where, be mine, be mine, be mine, right? And then those moments and then turn it up, right? <laughs> those kind of details I appreciate a lot, everyone. But let's just get into the English version of Bubble and maybe the, the sped up version. I don't know about uh, that one, but before we get into that and then we'll get into the concluding thoughts. Trust me. It'll be brief and quick with it. 
So let's just do that now. So last but not least, we have the English version of Bubble, the live performance of it actually. I thought might as well end on this instead of going through the sped up version as uh, well. I don't like sped up versions at all. Not gonna lie, sure it, it works for TikTok and Reels and all, but might as well check out the lyrics in full while enjoying a live performance by Stacy coming from the 82 live series from the Hello82 channel. Let's go. Hello82. All right. Seems like Yoon's walking in here. <laughs> yeah. I love how they integrated the fireworks too. I didn't expect that when I first streamed the song on Spotify. Did the string work? T A Y C go. If the yeah. I'm feeling some time for way. I'm to this. I'm to that. Whatever you say. Oh, this is good so far. ETA? <laughs> just want to be myself. Let him hate. They're just going to fade away. Whoa, hold up. <laughs> okay. Trying to lock me in a bubble. <laughs> they talking bubble, bubble, bubble. I think that ain't line is like an added syllable, but. I don't know how I feel about this moment. <laughs> Jake. I'm gonna stay the same. Let him eat. <laughs> this is gonna fade away. It still works even though they don't have their iconic 808 line, but... Trying to lock me in a bubble, I'm breaking free, it works so much somehow. that line that line i want to point out like seriously let him hate hello hello punch you like an 808 you know i know they just gonna fade away and i think that's just the the point of like the lyrics here let them talk, let them hate, right? I don't care. I'm not afraid. They wanted to more so keep of like the consistency of these lines. I felt like, I feel let like it elevate, let it go, elevate. Wow, that okay. You gotta admit, the English version is pretty good. You know, it's not as good as the original version, but they kept some integral parts, of course, in the song with that one line and all. And uh, the fact that, um, they came through with this performance was amazing and uh, was unexpected and all right so this honestly both korean and the english version like the original and the english version go crazy with it you still get that positive 
you know feel that you get in the song and especially the chorus and then you see the conga line coming out and all very engaging at the end of the day but all in all we're talking about more specifically the b-sides coming out of this third mini album off of teen fresh i want to say ooh, we went through not like you i really enjoyed that song and just the nuances in that song but i think i gotta go with for now i want to do but i just feel like be mine is gonna creep on me with more and more listens you feel me so right now i think my favorite b-sides go is i want to do be mine and not like you and i have nothing ag against not like you i actually really enjoyed not like you and how it played out everyone in terms of the arrangement it was just very seamless in that particular uh song but i want to do take in that like alternative pop y2k influence with the trap uh you know percussion work or more so like the likes of drill in the mix was really cool i've got to admit and then the whole storyline and message in be mine's clumsy love love thing that was going on for be mine i really appreciated as well and i don't know how many times i sound like a broken record by saying that but i really do everyone and sure it may not be like the grand era of younglove.com right i don't think we can ever have that conversation until we get an album that has six full tracks of b-sides including the title track or even a full album but i think this uh is a complete no skip of an album here with teen fresh without a doubt everyone but be sure to let me know your b-sides how are you feeling about all the b-sides as well as the english version of bubble i think the performance added a lot to the english uh version quite admittedly and all and just how the energy doesn't let up and so infectious with it is everything but take care as always let me know if you can agree with any sort of my sentiments or statements and analysis that I brought today to the table for this album but take care as always this has been garrison be sure to check out the patreon for pong pong stacy we're pretty much wrapping it up with the final episode episode five of course soon so stay tuned for that reaction and coverage take care and peace